Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to THE Students Webinars. Uh, today we are joined by HSLU who are here to discuss all things travel and really making a difference in society with their new program. Um, so we are here for the full hour. Please feel free to send us questions. Don't be shy. We don't bite, I promise you. And if you do have questions, like I said, throughout the whole webinar, please send them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen there. And for now, I'm going to hand you over to your main host, Ignacio. So good evening, good morning, good night, depending on where you're joining us. Thank you for, for joining us today in this in this session, which we called Unlocking Impactful Travels, <laughs> Business Education and Your Future. So I'm, I'm Ignacio, I'm the head of the program. I'm going to present from HSLU here, here at Spain, and it's our pleasure uh, together with my colleagues, Bettina and, and Mariana, to, to be here with you. Let me go very quickly through the agenda of the different points uh, we are going to cover in, in today's session. Uh, first of all, we'd like to start with big questions you, 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 we are sure you have around uh, what's the right career for you, uh, you know, what's going to be relevant for your professional uh, career and success. That's going to be uh, the first thing we are going to speak about. Then we would like to have a quick word about uh, why tourism, why is it relevant for you, and why sustainability, and what is it all about and why everybody is speaking today about sustainability. They would like to, to give you a quick overview of, of the program we are launching together with the United Nations, which is the Bachelor in International Sustainable Tourism. And last but not least, we will pass on to, to Mariana. Mariana is, is one of our students at HSLU, and she will share with you uh, her experience. And in, before we close, we will give some time for Q&A, for questions. We will take all the questions you, you may have. So let me start with the big questions. And I think this is very, very relevant for, for all of you. It, it doesn't matter in which career you're thinking about, right? The first question probably you have in, in your mind is, you know, what does it take, right, to, to make an impact today in society and have a successful professional career? That's probably something all of you are thinking about. The second big question you, you may have whenever you choose your studies, your bachelor of studies is, is it, you know, what's the right time to opt for and a specialization or for a general studies. In other words, shall I go for something general like business studies or shall I specialize myself into something? And the last question, which I think it's relevant is, okay, provided I'm clear about what I want to, to deliver. Uh, also something you probably are asking yourself is, does it make sense to study abroad or shall I stay home? And what can you get, what you cannot get from studying abroad? So these are very big questions we would like to start with. And, and actually, when we check different sources, we found out that actually the World Economic Forum in the recent report they published actually spoke about this. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through all these, do all these detail. But as you can see, they speak about a different kind of skills. And what we're going to do in the next slide is basically explain to you in a different way, in a more clear way, what the World Economic Forum thought about all of this. And Essentially, when you think about what to study, your careers, how to make an impact, whether to specialize or not, and what to study abroad or not, I believe there are four different things you have to look into. The first thing is what we, we call business foundation. The second one would be being able to get the right level of expertise. The third thing would be everything related to leadership. And the last one is gonna be uh, what's going on with your professional network. So let me go one by one and start in this case with uh, the business foundation. The first thing you need to, to, to do is, is whenever you're thinking about your professional career, uh, what's gonna make a difference for you is first of all, you need to understand how business works. And this doesn't mean that you have to be an expert on every single industry, every single uh, business function, but you need to have an understanding in the sense that uh, whatever you study, you should incorporate what we call core business models. Okay, so you need to have an understanding about finance, about accounting, operations, marketing, technology, and so on. Again, it's just to get an overall view, an overall understanding about how business works. On top of this, which is basically knowledge that you need to, to, to get, and this is a foundation, there are some pool of critical skills, skill, key skills that you need to develop. To start with, you have to develop, and that's going to be very critical for you, what's called cognitive skills. 
I mean, specifically two things, right? The first thing would be everything related to analytical skills. So, you know, this would be things like being able to create, uh, think critically, uh, going deep in your analysis. But obviously on top of this, and this is especially relevant today with all the automatization and all the artificial intelligence going on, you also have to develop what's called creativity skills. Okay, you have to be able to think out of the box, for instance. On top of this, which is basically classic cognitive skills, today something very relevant, very relevant is, is you need to get key technological skills. And this is basically technological literacy. You need to understand what are the key technologies impacting business and what you can get from them. And the last thing, the last key skills you may want to know and related to business foundation would be skills related to management. And specifically something that the World Economic Forum emphasizes, which is very critical, is everything related around equality management. And this is something that probably we oversee. We focus too much on quantity, but quality, making sure that we are doing things the right way is absolutely essential. So this would be a step number one. This, that's the business foundation. And then we need to move into the second step, which is the right expertise. Uh, let me share with you some thoughts, okay, based, based on my experience <laughs> uh, training uh, bachelor students and master's students for many, many years. And one something which is very, very relevant, and, and this is something which is going to happen to you, is that at some point, <laughs> sooner or later, uh, you're going to be specialized in an industry or an area. Um, and this can happen in two different ways, okay? You can go for something general, and what's going to happen is at the end of your studies, you're going to get an offer from an industry and probably with from a very specific area. And then you're going to go through that lane for many, many years. Or this is something you can decide. I would say, what's the right decision? I think that it's going to be okay to specialize as long as you choose the right industry and the right area. So for the industry, okay, my recommendation in general could be opt always for an industry with a steady growth. Why is this? Because if the industry is growing in a robust way, the opportunities, the challenges, and the options you're going to have are going to be significantly higher than in an industry which is not really growing. And the second thing is the specialization is also something in a very specific function. It's something that is commendable, provided, again, that you choose the right thing. So in this case, my recommendation would be focus on something which is highly demanded, that has high potential, which is demanded by corporates, by companies in general, and also something very, very relevant, something that is also meaningful for you, right? So you, when you speak about the specialization, you combine potential with something which is really relevant for you, something you resonate with. So this has to do with the right expertise. So yes, it, it's okay. That's my experience it, to specialize, even at, if, if you are very young, provided you choose the right industry and you choose, you opt for the right area. The point number three, which is gonna be absolutely critical for your professional career is everything related to leadership skills, right? And specifically, we think about the World Economic Forum, they speaks about self-efficacy. That's basically how you manage yourself and how you work with other people, okay? Then this includes team working, but other stuff. More specifically, here you have a pool of things which are happening, things that you really have to, to work hard on. Okay, so of course you want to be an expert, you want to have a lot of knowledge on, on very specific areas, but in the end of the day, what's gonna happen is you're gonna make the difference by the, developing core leadership skills. Okay, so whatever you study, make sure you're gonna get some training or some initiation on knowing yourself, okay? Because it's absolutely essential if you want to be successful to know yourself. Also, the, the studies you take should work on communication skills. That's extremely important, okay? We speak about expressing yourself properly in writing or orally. So that has to do with communication. Third thing, very relevant, has to do with influence. And more and more, the way you're gonna work is, is not gonna be in hierarchical organizations, but it's gonna be more and more on flat organizations. So you have to be able to influence people. And the last core skill I would like to emphasize today has to do with learning agility in the sense that the knowledge you're going to get is going to be obsolete in a question of three, five years time. So you have to be able to, to learn, to be curious and to learn continuously. 
What's also relevant from a leadership skills perspective is this, the current situation is tricky because if you think about any company, any organization you're going to be joining, actually what's going to happen is you're going to be dealing with people from different generations. Okay, probably you're going to be located in generation set, but as you can see, what's going to happen in real life is you're going to be dealing with millennials, generation X, <laughs> baby boomers, and even traditionalists <laughs> in some special cases. And this requires a lot of flexibility because obviously you don't work the same way with one generation or another. So you need to have a lot of flexibility. And the last thing that is happening more and more is we are working in a global world, right? So you have to be able to deal, to integrate, to cooperate with people from different cultures, different perspectives, and people from all around the world. And the last piece <laughs> I would like to emphasize today has to do with the professional network. And this is probably something that is not that relevant for you right now, but believe me, mid long term is going to make a very, very big difference for you, for your progression, for the opportunities you're going to be able to fetch. And where are you going to get this professional network? Well, it's coming from different places. But to start with, the people you're going to study with, and, and that's very, very important, okay? And this includes, obviously, your cohort, your class the people you're going to meet at the university. So all the student body, that's very, very important. So you have to make sure you're studying with the right people. Second thing that can make a very big difference when you think about the network is the professors or lecturers or people that you're going to be uh, dealing with when, when you study. And, and that's also something you should look into, you know, who's going to be your professors, who's going to be your faculty, who are going to be give you master classes. <laughs> And also other things that I think are going to help you a lot with the professional network. It has to do with all the professional experience, all the internships you might be able to access to get while you take their bachelor studies. And then last but not least, obviously, uh, there's one component which is up to you, right? Which is your ability to connect with other people. In this case, I'm, I'm speaking about LinkedIn, but obviously uh, there are different ways in which you can do that. So to some extent, obviously, the university is going to help you with this but also there is some responsibility which is gonna be on you. And that's all from my side. That's an introduction about the big questions. Now I pass on to, to Bettina. Bettina, over to you. Thank you, Ignacio. Yeah, the, the webinar today is called Unlocking um, Impactful Tour uh, Travels. Impactful often is related to sustainability. So we will look into this um, in a bit, but why actually tourism? And at this point, I want to, you to think about what tourism actually means. Many times we think about hotel industry, like just working at a hotel or something similar to that. But if you book a trip, you first need transport, so airline industry, maybe trains, maybe something like mobility. Then you continue with planning. You May see, might see some content of marketeers or content creators. Then you use several platforms, maybe Airbnb, Booking.com, TripAdvisor, to get some inspiration and ideas about your trip. And only then, at some point, when you started your travel, you stay at a hotel, you stay in one destination, someone branded it this, this destination, someone is managing this destination, all these kind of things. So tourism, this is what I want to highlight, is much more than just hotel industry. It is actually a super interesting industry. Why tourism matters? We have some numbers here. So uh, what is highly relevant is that 10% of the world G world's GDP are actually generated by tourism. This is extremely relevant for many countries that are maybe not industrial countries. Um, for them, it's a really relevant export good. And we need to consider that with a growing wealth in our world, also tourists are growing and mm -hmm. more people are able to travel. So um, this is why from 10% we have right now, this is probably even growing. Then also we are creating jobs in the tourism industry not only for unskilled labor, but also for highly skilled labor, management positions and things like that. And another thing is like um, preserving cultural heritage and we encourage like mm -hmm. peace, security and the understanding between countries and nations. 
what we see many times if we like open our um, social networks or maybe even newspapers, we listen to the radio news. Um, many times it's about sustainability nowadays. And this is far beyond tourism. It's in the building industry, it's in fashion industry, mm -hmm. but even also the tourism industry. And this is why we cannot close our eyes from uh, the topic of sustainability. And this is why we came to the conclusion we need to build a program that is focusing on sustainable travels. Sustainability is about meeting the needs of the current generation without compromising the needs of the future generations to come. And this also highly relevant for tourism, because if we think differently, it's us who may snorkel in the coral reefs in Australia, or we may be able to see the orang utan in Borneo or the glaciers in Patagonia, but our children or grandchildren won't see it. So tourism is dead if we don't interfere right now and we do it differently. How businesses nowadays do this is considering the ESG. I will explain this a bit. Um, environmental is the E, then we have the S, the social part. In tourism, we often talk about sociocultural because culture is a very important part for tourism. And then we have the good governance. So environmental is all about considering efficiency in resource management, considering our footprint, um, considering global warming and biodiversity in such topics. Governance is about, for example, um, business ethics or mitigating corruption or just like developing a good governance for our business. And when it comes to social, we think about like um, ethical treatment of our stuff. We think about um, what impact we have for a local community. We think about like equal opportunities. We think about, um, yeah, no harassment or things like that. And nowadays it's not yet a mainstream. What we see here is like, we have different um, kinds of customers. We have the one, the really um, forward going uh, green customers that consider sustainability a lot. They are willing to pay a bit more even. And for them, it's highly important that they are considerate with their behavior. Then we have um, the blue customers. Those are the ones for them, it's somehow important, but it's not the most relevant criteria. And then we have the great customers. They value anything else more than sustainability. It's not even something they really yeah, thought about. And nowadays only like 30% are willing or really considering um, paying a price for sustainable actions, but this can even be more and more in future if people see a value behind it and this is our job we need to um, yeah show and demonstrate the value of sustainable action and then we believe people understand and also pay for this why is esg good for the business it's not only adding value to the client but it's all you adding value to the business it's Maybe if we think about Patagonia. Patagonia was the, I think, ranked number one in the most um, uh, trusted brand or not trusted, but um, yeah, like uh, best reputed brand in, in the world. And why is that? Because they have a very good brand image and they consider sustainability. And this gives you, them the reputation and this is why people trust them. So this is basically the, the message I want to deliver here. It's about your brand purpose. It's about customer loyal, loyalty. It's about people who love working for you, employee satisfaction. It's about your innovative spirit. You have new opportunities. You um, think forward and also um, consider risk that may come in future. So you are long-termly running um, your business sustainably. And it's about operational efficiency. Like, as I said before, you consider resource efficiency. So you use probably less 
electricity, less water or things like that in your daily operations. And um, it's about you, as I said, employer branding. Um, you are the one where people want to work. And this all in the middle, we see premium prices. It's not necessarily always more expensive, but as I said, if people understand the value of something, they are always willing to pay a bit more. Next slide. Yeah, so um, what I was introducing right now, it's like, basically the conclusion is, it's not a choice anymore. And at some point we will um, be at a stage where the regulation will such um, business operations compulsory. Um, so you have to consider it at some point. 193 countries already um, yeah, admitted to the um, sustainable development goals on a global scale and to reach them until 2030. So it's no choice. It's actually serious and we have to, um, yeah go with this. This is why um, we partnered with a UN organization. You may know the United Nations and you may know, for example, other special agencies they have like the World Health Organization or the UNESCO. And another one is the UN Tourism. Previously, they were called UN World Tourism Organization, UNWTO. Now it's UN Tourism. And we, like the UN, developed those sustainable development goals, for example. And this is why it's great to have a partner like them um, to yeah develop and excel this um, Bachelor of International Sustainable Tourism. What is the added value for you with this cooperation between us as HSLU and the UN Tourism? First of all, it's the first time ever the UN Tourism uh, partnered with a study program. So you can only study this and have this added value with us. Then um, our tourism program considers sustainability in each and every module. This is not only one module about sustainability, no. And it doesn't mean that we always talk about the same thing for three years. It's not like that, but it's, for example, in the marketing module, green marketing is a topic. In the finance model, we think about sustainable finance. In whatever module, sustainability, business operations, we think about business ethics and sustainable business operations. So it's basically always thought with, and this is how the future only can work. Then um, we provide you with an extensive network access. Think about the UN tourism has enormously big network. They have members, they have member states, they have the businesses, um, they are working with and we open doors for you. Also, we as HSIU, we work with partners in Switzerland. So you do projects with them and we have them as um, employees for your internship in our uh, great circle. So use this, we go to excursions, we have keynote speakers use this and um, yeah, create some, some contacts. Then you will, yeah, graduate with a Swiss degree, which has globally a very good reputation and gives you a good start in your uh, career. And then something that is very important nowadays, um, as Ignacio already said, like the world is globalizing and uh, you have to go with it. And uh, you live in Switzerland and in, in Spain. So you already have two different uh, countries where you get some experience. You have your peers coming from anywhere in the world. You have lecturers from anywhere in the world. You have like different case studies. You have um, internships where, that you can do wherever you want. So the intercultural learning is enormous and almost nowhere you can get this. Then the practical emphasis, this is something I will tell you in a bit also, is something that is highly relevant for us as a applied university, uh, as a university of applied sciences and arts. So, for example, we 
take you to excursions. We will go to the ITB, the big um, tourism um, fair in Berlin. We will go to visit startups and modern innovative businesses. So you really get a practical approach and also our lecturers many times also work in the tourism industry. As I already said, you will be studying in different places. So how does it work? The first year you will be in Madrid in um, Spain. The reason for that is the UN tourism, here it says still UN WTO, it's the same thing. It, uh, headquarters is based in Madrid. So you will have also experts from UN tourism right in your lectures. Then the second year is online. So you can basically study from anywhere. The third semester will be online and remotely. And the fourth semester is an internship semester and you can uh, do this internship wherever you want. And then after that, for the final year, you come to Lucerne in Switzerland. This is basically the home of HSRU and you come and graduate at our home. The competency goals for our graduates are basically four pillars. Um, we focus on the factual knowledge for sure. So we give you a, a grounded uh, knowledge in tourism and all the business related contexts. We, um, um, as I highlighted for us, it's very important that it's applied that it's problem solving and practice oriented. So you graduate with those skills. We have diff different modules where you really work in projects and in groups and on um, practice oriented cases. Then as tourism is a people business, uh, the communication skills is highly relevant and the social skills. Communication skills, um, this includes like talking and presenting to different stakeholders and you train this and the social behavior, of course, as I said, like different cultures. Um, you have to integrate yourself in, an, in a company, in your internship and such things. That was this slide. Yes, just briefly um, about the study content. Um, we focus on different sections. Uh, the management section is um, quite big and also uh, where you want to end, right? You want to manage um, uh, or be become a manager in, in a business later on or maybe even your own business. Then we have the bu business and development modules. This is mostly about uh, like the very tourism related um, uh, modules. And then we have the applied science. This starts in semester one and kind of prepares you for your bachelor thesis. You learn about quantitative research, qualitative research, so you are well prepared and don't need to jump into cold water for your thesis. And then it's about marketing and communication. This is about visual communication, um, yeah, presenting, but also tourism marketing. And then we have the professional world. The biggest part of this is the internship and also, for example, a career lounge in the last semester uh, where we prepare you like how to um, yeah, apply for jobs. We have a career day, day with different businesses so you can again also meet some potential employers. The worldwide internship, as I said, it's up to you, you where you want to do it. Um, but just to give you a bit of an idea, um, what those businesses could be. It's like we have brands that don't come directly to your mind uh, when it comes to tourism, like American Express, who, who would have thought about them or Disney actually. But then of course we have the, the bigger ones, Airbnb booking and the hotel brands or airlines, cruise ships, whatever. About um, a bit more to your career after graduating, we have different branches where you can work uh, listed here. For example, the hospitality industry, this is the obvious one. Then the destination management organizations, who is actually running the places, airlines, tour operators, incoming in agencies or national associations, NGOs, and things like that. And then the positions you may 
skill there is in marketing and communication, tourism product design and development. And then we have the customer relationship management, sustainable transformation. So consulting businesses to more sustainable actions. Then we just want to highlight again why we think uh, the UN is a great partner. As you can see here in the middle, this was um, basically our school and UN tourism, um, yeah, having this partnership founded. And then you see on the left, Lionel Messi, he's um, an ambassador for UN tourism as a, a responsible tourist tourism. And then even, um, yeah, actors like Leonardo DiCaprio, he's, uh, yeah, a re real advocate for uh, sustainable actions and very considerate about climate change and economic, uh, ecologic um, thinking. Again, here, um, this is what you and tourism actually does, like besides their usual um, work, they have quite some interesting initiatives where you can also dive in a little bit. They, for example, um, bottom right, they have a UNWTO Students League and they every year they have the Tourism Day where we can try to um, also give you some insights from there. Um, they do like the, the best tourism villages every year. They have free courses in, in tourism in their online academy. Um, they have, yeah, the, the innovation hubs, the investment circles and different kind of things. And all these insights are also brought into the curriculum for you. Here, what you can see on the left um, is just we want to highlight, and this is also highly relevant for um, UN tourism. Um, tourism is actually the top employer for youth, so for you. And um, the the good thing about our program is that it's not all on you. The Swiss government um, finances quite a big proportion of this study program and namely 50% so it's highly subsidized and um, yeah you should uh, take this into consideration then um, as I said before tourism is steadily growing and even the COVID crisis didn't stop it we saw it um, yeah jumping up afterwards again and there are expected to be 7 million jobs in tourism by 2030. And um, yeah, now with the program we just introduced to you, we have the first intake limited to 50 students. We will not have a second class and um, yeah, you can still mm -hmm. enroll to it. The, the deadline is the 30th April now, end of this month. So and now I would like to hand over to Mariana, who is actually um, an international student at our school, also in tourism. And uh, yeah, I give the word to you, Mariana. Maybe you can share some of your experience with us. Sure. Thank you very much, Bettina. Uh, well, as you all heard, I'm an international student, so that means I am not Swiss, even though I am studying here full time. I come from Mexico and I started my studies about two and a half years ago. So the reason why I did uh, like do an, an international study, because you may be wondering um, why to study abroad. So maybe you can ask if you go like two slides forward, another one. Oh, one behind. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on, but well, uh, the reason why I decided to study abroad is because first of all, I wanted to learn to be more independent and well, basically like to open my horizons, to learn to do new things, to learn about new cultures. And let's be honest also to travel because Switzerland is literally in the middle of Europe. So you can go like by train pretty much everywhere uh, to Italy, France, Germany. And I mean, if you're studying tourism, why not? Uh, you know, use it as an excuse guys. 
And what I have seen at work and at school that being an international student and studying in a different country brings to the table is that you can actually like talk about your experience from back in your country and your new experience over here. So I feel that at work, um, they really valorate that. It enriches you. And also, I mean, as I previously said, traveling gives you just a different perspective on how, uh, you know, different worlds work. Uh, so maybe you can move over to the next slide, Ignacio. Yeah, so that's uh, like pretty much me in the past two and a half years. Uh, I have met people also from maybe not all over the world, but yeah, I have had some uh, German friends, also people from Mexico who came to study here to, to Switzerland, uh, people from Italy, people from Austria, um, also some Latinos are from the States, from Canada. So it's it's honestly a, a very international yeah, environment being in Lucerne. If you can go to the next slide, Ignacio, please. So why to study at the HSLU? Um, well, first of all, I would like to split that question into why to study in Switzerland, and then I'm going to move over to why the HSLU. So if you can move to the next slide, please. Okay, as you can see, uh, the landscape is just amazing. If you enjoy doing outdoor activities, I can tell you it is a place for you, but also if you're more of a city uh, person, cities like Lucerne and Zurich just you basically have the best of both worlds because you are in the city, you can go out during the night and also the next morning you can go walk 10 minutes and you're already in a forest. So I think like, no, I, I actually don't think, I know all of these pictures are taken within 30 minutes from Lucerne, 30 minutes, one hour. So it's like, honestly, either you go for a walk or you catch a train and you are like in this beautiful landscape. And the great thing about studying here for one year is that you get to enjoy all the seasons, which is like summer, you can swim in the lake or you can go snowboarding if you like it. So it's pretty cool. Can you move to the next uh, slide, please? Thank you. And this is why I chose to study in the HSLU. So in case that you're wondering, like, am I going to be left alone here? Is there going to be anyone else? Am I going to make friends? Yes, you will. There is a really nice group from the HSLU called ESN, and it's basically a group of international students. There are like a hundred new persons every semester, so you get to hang out with them. Um, and yeah, it's, that's pretty cool. And also the great thing about the HSLU is that uh, you get to not really work, but put into practice your skills that you have learned during school, which is pretty much what Bettina was saying. Uh, I can tell you she was being honest about it because I have had field trips to other places like Davos or I have had business simulators or I have worked with like real clients as part of classes. So, for example, this semester I'm working with the Lucerne Tourism Office um, and we actually have to deliver. So it's, it's really nice to like get some knowledge from the lecturers and then to put it into practice. I really like that. And let's not forget that Switzerland is actually the capital of tourism. So it's going to be a great plus for you guys. And I think that will be it from my side, unless you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mariana. Let's let's move on now to, 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 to the questions, OK? Um, so let me start with the, the, the first question we have, which is from Sherry's. So let me let me read the question aloud. She's asking what are the requirements to attend uh, this school, okay? So if you go, if, if you go to the website, okay, you can find all the requirements over there, Sherry's. But for joining this this bachelor program, basically you need to you have a high school uh, degree, okay? So you just need to submit to us the, the high school degree. You need to submit to us a English certificate, C1 level or higher. And in this case, uh, for if you want to join the program, we are speaking about. You need to have one year of professional experience. It doesn't have to be necessarily uh, on tourism. It just needs to be a professional experience. Those are the main requirements uh, we, we need you to comply with, okay, to, to apply to, to the program. So that's actually the second question we have, which is, do I need a work experience for, for this course? And as we said, yes, you need to have one year of a professional experience. As I said, uh, we, 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 have, we have some flexibility with this in the sense it is not necessarily experiencing in tourism. 
It can be in business in general. It can be in different places. So if you have any questions, just drop an email. We will be happy happy to to help you with this. Uh, how much trouble? And that's the third question we have. Is 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 involved in in this degree? So to start with, that's something we mentioned. Okay, the first year is going to take place in in Madrid. The third year is going to take place in Switzerland. And the second year, actually, it's going to be up to you. You can stay in Madrid, or you can go back home, or you can uh, go to Switzerland. It, it's really up to you. You can actually join us from any place in the world in the second year. The only requisite is you need an internet connection. Okay. And the same thing with apply for the internship. The internship, we will provide you with a different pool of options in, in different industries, in different countries. And actually, what you will do is you will take, you will take the one that uh, you prefer. Okay. So the traveling fixed, I would say, is Madrid and, and Switzerland, Lucerne. And then second year is, is going to be really up to you. Um, another question we have is, is how easy it, is it to find accommodation of these places to study? Um, I would say Madrid is probably easier than, than, than Lucerne, okay? But in any case, what we're going to do is we're going to provide you with full support, okay? Not only for the accommodation, I would say I, we would provide you with full support for setting up, okay? So it's not only accommodation, everything you might be doing, I don't know, insurance, uh, uh, phone number, etc. We will provide you with all the support you might be needing. You might be needing for that. Another question we have is, is there a guaranteed job after doing this degree? I don't think there is any degree in the work that can actually guarantee you a work, right? <laughs> so, because we are not, we are not a headhunter, okay? We are university, okay? What we can share with you is, is, is that a very high percentage of our students are actually getting a job after graduation. And in this specific case, based on, on what Bettina actually presented to you, you're going to be in close contact with quite a few corporates, right? Uh, and this is going to be the case because the lecturers are coming, quite a few of them are coming from the industry. I don't know, you're going to have a vice president from Radisson or a director from Hilton or from very large companies. So, so obviously, that's going to give you a lot of opportunities. And also, something that happens is if you do a good job with the, with the internship, obviously, your the probability of getting hired is, 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 is pretty high, it's pretty good. Okay, but no, we cannot guarantee, but I would say uh, this is something that no one can actually it can actually uh, guarantee. And maybe, Maria, oh, maybe I can of jump course, in of course. Um, because I think the, the the statistics from our school is something mm -hmm. far over beyond um, beyond 90 percent of our graduates find a job within one year in their respective field of studies. So uh, I think this is great. Almost everyone finds a job within the first year in in yeah mm -hmm. in the field, right? Yeah, yeah. That's one thing. And another thing that I, I would add to to what Bettina is saying is this is a program that we have designed from scratch. Okay, so we actually spoke to corporates. We understood the needs that they had. Okay, and based on those those needs, that requirement, that's how we came up with with uh, with the program. And more specifically, everything we've been telling you about sustainability, it's, it's a big, big market demand today. Okay, and actually there's a big issue because there is a shortage of specialized people in sustainability. Okay, so that's that's a very big thing today. Okay, so we cannot guarantee. Still, Bettina shared with you a, a very nice a statistic. Okay, but the evidence is, is, is pretty good, no? Um, Mariana, there is a question for you. Let me read it for you. Okay, Mariana, how do you find yeah. integration into Europe? Were people friendly? Um, well, it is very different, I have to say. So coming from Mexico, <laughs> like the society is just different in Switzerland. Uh, people were friendly indeed. Like I'm, I'm not going to deny that. I think it's going to be easier uh, your first year in Madrid, to be honest with you. But it is like you're going to make a good group of friends within Switzerland. Like I can also assure you that. So, for example, a friend of mine who just arrived one month ago, literally, she told me she went to skiing last week with a group of Swiss people and they lent her uh, like their equipment. They drove her, they paid for her lunch. So they were like just very kind, you know, um, and that's just how Swiss people are. It might be a bit hard to like get into a really deep connection with them, but they're always going to be kind. And again, they're international students as well. So you will manage. Okay. Um... And I'm, I'm just reading some 
there's some additional questions. If I had 5.5 .5 on IELTS, can I go to Canada? Well, this is not Canada, this is uh, this is Switzerland, okay? And what we are demanding is C1 level, okay? And the equivalent in IELTS would be seven, okay? Just to give you a reference. So it should be a bit higher than 4.5. If I, 5.5, I would say most schools is not gonna be uh, acceptable if you want to study in English. Um, another question we have is, is can students anywhere get the scholarship? Yes, and, and actually that's something that uh, we are offering to, to, to the first cohort, okay? So every single student who is admitted in the program, doesn't matter where the student is coming from, uh, the student is getting a 50% approximately scholarship provided by the Swiss government, okay? So in case you, you apply and you're admitted, you will get automatically this, uh, this scholarship. It doesn't matter where you are coming, okay? And you ask also for the link, for registering, I just shared it with you in the in the chat. Okay. Um, I don't know if there is any other question, anything else you would like to 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 ask. Any of us, Bettina, Mariana, or myself. All right. Let me share my the screen again. Okay, so I would like to share my my contact details. Okay, so just in case uh, you you need some any additional information okay so here you have my email okay so if if there is any question anything uh, you may need help with please reach me out i will come back to you i will come back to you as, as soon as possible so ignacio.cafo8 at hslu.ch just drop me an email we will be we will be we will be in touch all right Amazing. Thank you guys for a brilliant presentation and lots of information there for you to understand and to unpack. Um, and for those who couldn't attend today, we will be sending this into a email very, very shortly tomorrow. And that will be for you to follow up on and we will be in touch very, very soon. Um, any last words, guys? No? See you in Madrid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and all the best. Eh? All the best. <laughs> And thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you all for taking the time. And we will all be in touch very, very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.